Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we're going to solve the same problems we did in the previous video. We're going to try to find the volume of that cylinder. But in this video, we're going to use cylindrical coordinate systems. Instead of rectangular, which of course we showed that it worked, we used the x, dy, dz as our small volume element. We need to figure out how to come up with the cylindrical volume element. So what does the volume element dv look like? when we use cylindrical coordinates. And that's, of course, the key to doing it in cylindrical coordinates. And so here we have a volume element. So you can see that if you have a cylinder-shaped cylinder object, you can take a small little volume of that. But notice that the outside and the inside wall have that cylindrical shape to it. The height will be linear, so that's in the z direction. And then radially outward, we have the radius, the distance from the central axis of the cylinder outward. So this would be the distance r, and this would be a small change in the r. So we can say that this line right here, this distance from there to there, can be called a dr. And the distance from there to there can be called r. So that's the arbitrary distance from the central axis to your little volume element. The height will be called a dz, and that's... That's simple straight, that's a simple straight line here that will be dz. But what about this distance here and this distance there? What do you call that? What is this distance here? Well, that's kind of like the arc of a circle. And the arc of a circle can be calculated by taking the distance of that, the radius, times the angle and the small change in angle from there to there. If the angle from here, from our reference point to there is theta, then this will be a small d theta, a small change in the angle. So we could say that this length here would be the distance r times a ch small change in the angle d theta. So the product of those three, so this distance times this distance times this distance, actually gives you the dv. So we can say that this is equal to r times d theta times dr times dz. And of course, when we rearrange that, we can say that dv is equal to r times dr d theta dz. And that's typically the way in which we integrate it. We integrate over r first, and over theta, and then over z. But it can be done differently if it's more appropriate. So you can see then, instead of having a small volume element that looks like this, like a little cube, dx, dy, dz, we have something that has rounded sides on one side, and we call that r times dr, d theta, and dz. So when we're going to integrate that now as a triple integral, we can say that the volume of the cylinder is equal to the triple integral. And so r is going to be integrated from the central axis, 0, to the outside, which is a distance of 2. So from r equals 0 to 2. The, the uh, theta direction, well, we're going to integrate all the way around the circle. That's from 0 to 2 pi. So theta is going to be integrated from 0 to 2 pi all the way around the circle. And then for z, we're going to integrate from 0 all the way to the top. So from z equals 0 to 8. And so those are going to be the limits of integration times our dv. And our dv, of course, is going to be equal to r times dr d theta times dz. And now we're ready to integrate. So we're going to start with the integral of r dr. And when we integrate that, we get r, r squared over 2. So this is going to be equal to the triple integral. Now when we have two integrals left from 0 to 8 and to 2 pi for z and theta. And here we end up with r squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to 2. And of course, we still have the d theta and we still have the dz. And notice that when we plug in the lower limit, this should be a 2, then we get 0. Plug in the upper limit, we get 2 squared, which is 4 divided by 2, which is 2. So this is equal to 2 times the integral from 0 to 8 and from 0 to 2 pi of d theta and dz. And you begin to notice that this is a whole lot easier than using the rectangular coordinates to try and solve the, for the volume of a cylinder. Now, integrating d theta, it's easy. That simply becomes theta. So this is equal to 2 times the one integral left for z. And d theta becomes theta evaluated from 0 to 2 pi times dz. And of course, when you plug in the upper limit, we get 2 pi. When you plug in the lower limit, you get 0. So this becomes 2 times 2 pi 
times the only integral that we have left from 0 to 8 for dz. And so we get 4 pi in the front. Integrating dz is really easy. So this is equal to 4 pi times z evaluated from 0 to 8. And then if you plug in the upper limit, you get 8. Lower limit, you get nothing. So this is 8 times 4, or 32 pi. And of course, we saw in the previous video that that was indeed the volume of that cylinder. But notice how much easier it is when you use cylindrical coordinates to try to calculate the volume of a cylinder. Now you may say, well, why are we doing that? It's so easy. We can simply use the equation of a cylinder, but at least we want to start doing triple integrals with some very easy examples because they do get a little bit more difficult and not quite as easy to calculate in any other method. Now notice again that we have our volume element, which is r dr, d theta dz, and we start with the integrating over dr, then over d theta, then over dz. Notice we have our limits and it makes that a whole lot easier. That's how it's done.